Hello, my viewers, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're discussing a tragic and shocking event that unfolded at a high school in Georgia. A 14-year-old student identified as Court Gray has been charged with the mass pupiling that resulted in the unaliving of two teachers and two students. Now, according to people on TikTok, nine others are currently in the hospital receiving treatment for their injuries. Now, this disturbing incident has raised numerous questions, including how a young student managed to obtain a firearm. Now, in this video, we'll take a look into the details, explore the community's reaction on TikTok. So stay tuned for a comprehensive look at this heartbreaking situation. Don't forget to share your thoughts as well in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up by tapping on the like button. With that said, let's take a look at these videos. I will be right back. I just got through live streaming the first press conference held by authorities in Weiner, Georgia in connection with the scheme that took place this morning at Appalachia High School and for the first news conference I have to admit I was shocked when the GPI did the following. Sheriff mentioned earlier this morning the shooter is in custody. His name is Colt, that's C-O-L-T Gray. He is a 14 year old student here at the school. G-R-A-Y. He is a 14-year-old student here at the high school. Again, he has been taken into custody. Uh, he, is, he will be charged with murder and he will be tried as an adult. Yes, you heard it correctly. At the first press conference, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation identified the put name out and said that the will be tried as an adult. Now, there are pictures going around of the subject and I have seen them allegedly taken from the school yearbook. I choose not to share it at this time because I haven't done my own independent verification. But as soon as it's available, I will update you with more information. Breaking news regarding this that happened in Appalachia High School in Atlanta. The suspect has been identified. It's a 14 year old. Get this, a 14 year old. And his name is Colt Gray. I think it speaks for itself. A 14-year-old having access to a gun is just not normal. And unfortunately, we're seeing stuff like this. Also, there was a student at the school, which he then attacked. And among the four dead include two teachers and two students. And the nine others who are wounded are being treated in a hospital as we speak. And when the police were called, they arrived immediately and they confronted her and he immediately surrendered and he got arrested. And also, he has currently been charged with murder and he will be trialed as an adult. Police don't know where he got them. In general, where are young teenagers getting these weapons from? And I'm so sorry, but regarding all these schools, you might as well install, you know what they do in TSA? You might as well just install that in school. Every time you walk into school, you go through a security light system to make sure no one gets hurt. And currently, police and officials don't know what the purpose was behind this attack, but America needs to work on making its country safer. We can't have children murdered at school. So there's a school just now in Georgia. Just barely a month after school started at Appalachia High School in Georgia, they had a school. CNN is reporting that four have been killed and approximately 30 have been injured. I'm on my lunch break at school and this is news that no teacher, student, or parent wants, needs, or should have to hear. What I hate so much and what actually makes me sick to my stomach is that when I heard this, I thought, oh, only four people died. Only four people. You've become so accustomed to this that honestly, for that brief moment, I thought, oh, only four people died in this school. And one person dying in a school is too much, let alone four, right? And unfortunately, we have a plethora of other students to compare it to. These high school students for the rest of their life are going to be traumatized, okay? Because they went to school today. And they weren't traumatized in school because of CRT or because they read a banned book or because they learned social and emotional skills, okay? They were traumatized, and let's make sure that we get this right, because someone had access to that shouldn't have and went into the school and at them. We need to be better. Our students and our kids deserve better than this. The students helped drag the teacher that went back into the classroom after the gunman opened fire inside the high school. The more we learn about this story, the worse and traumatic it gets. The students said that her and her classmates were in statistics class when they heard someone beating on a locker outside the classroom. She says her teacher went out to investigate and that's when they heard their teacher fell back into the doorway of their classroom. 
All I hear is boom, boom, boom. We all booked it down. Everyone was crying. Kerrigan said there was a scary moment. Kerrigan said that as a police were escorting her outside, she saw a student near the bathroom. Like my mutual said on Twitter, those brave babies in Georgia had to drag their teacher's body out of the hallway back into the classroom and barricade themselves inside while waiting to help and also trying, trying to perform trauma care. The teacher died right in front of them while they were waiting for help. If that happened in statistics class, these kids would never view math or stats or numbers the same. And what's sad is that these folks view feminism and drag queens during story hour as the biggest threat to these children in the classroom. Meanwhile, this is what's happening. A 14 year old did this. They more worried about whether the 14 year old is getting drag queen books or freaky books whole time. They can access a firearm and wreak havoc on the entire school district by making the entire world watch of this American pastime that happens in school. But they say they care about the kids, though. They don't never have that same energy when it comes to this, though, huh? NRA money spin good, I guess. More key details are being confirmed about the high school outside of Atlanta today. It took place at Appalachie High School, and there was a student at the school. He's only 14 years old, and sadly, he took the lives of four people. Two were students two were teachers. Reports are saying that at least nine other people were injured. The suspect is in custody and it's being reported by the Associated Press that he is going to be charged as an adult with the crime of murder. As you know, this is a late breaking and developing story, so details may change as things continue to unfold and new information comes to light. Now, it is confirmed a 14-year-old boy has unalived two fellow students and two teachers and wounded nine others in a pew-pewing at a Georgia high school on Wednesday, jolting the United States with the first mass campus pew-pewing since the start of the school year. Now, the, the suspect who had been interviewed by law enforcement last year over online threats about committing a school pew-pewing was taken into custody shortly after the pew-pewing at Appalachie High School in Georgia, investigators said. Now, he was identified as Court Gray, 14, and he'll be charged and trialed as an adult. The director of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation told a press conference. Now, Barrow County Sheriff Jared Smith said the Pew Pew man armed with an AR platform style weapon was quickly confronted by deputies assigned to the school and that the suspect immediately got on the ground and surrendered. Once under arrest, the suspect was speaking with investigators who believe he was acting alone, but they declined to say if they knew what motivated him. Now, officials identified those unalived as two 14-year-old students and two teachers. All nine of those hospitalized were expected to recover, Smith told reporters. Pure evil did what happened today, Smith said. The Federal Bureau of Investigation later issued a statement revealing that it had investigated online threats to commit a school pew in 2023 and local law enforcement interviewed a 13-year-old subject and his father in nearby Jackson County. Now, the statement did not identify the teen. But Georgia officials said the statement was in connection to the subject in custody. Now, a student said the suspected person who pupilled left the classroom at the beginning of their Algebra 1 class around 9.45 a.m. When he returned near the end of the class, he knocked to get back in. Another student went to open the door, but this student said that the student noticed the pupil and didn't open the door. She said that this person with a pew pew went to the classroom next door and opened fire. Now, the sheriff's department received the first reports of the pew pewing around 10.20 a.m. Law enforcement arrived shortly after those calls, in addition to two school resources officers assigned to Appalachie High. A resource officer confronted the, the suspected person who pew pewed, who immediately surrendered to the deputy and was taken into custody, Barrow County Sheriff Judd Smith told reporters. When the pew pewing happened, all schools in the district were placed in lockdown and police were sent out of an abundance of caution to all district high schools. The FBI and the ATF were later on the scene working with local and state officials, Attorney General said. Now, there were no reports of secondary incidents or scenes, law enforcement sources told CNN. The pew pew used in Wednesday's pew pewing was an AR platform weapon, according to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation director. A law enforcement official told CNN earlier it was an AR-15 style rifle. Appalachia High School has received a phone threat earlier in the morning warning that there would be pew pewings at five schools and that Appalachia would be the first, multiple law enforcement officials told CNN. GBI Director Chris Hosey said there's no evidence of other schools being targeted, but investigators are pursuing any leads of any potential associates of the pew pewing that 
was involved in this incident. At this point, there's no evidence that any additional pupil was involved and no evidence of a list of schools being targeted. He said, schools in the county will be closed for the week while the investigation plays out. Now, the only question I have at this point is how a 14-year-old boy like Cord Gray managed to get hold of a pupil. It's crucial to understand where he found the firearm and what led him to use it in such a violent manner. Now, this incident prompts us to ask whether there are underlying influences or individuals who played a role in this behavior, or if this tragic act was purely a result of his own actions. I feel understanding these factors is important in order to address the root causes of such violence and preventing future tragedies. Now, reports indicate that this tragic event marks the 45th school pew-pewing of 2024, and according to CNN's analysis, it is the deadliest one this year. Now, this grim statistic underscores a deeply troubling trend and raises agent questions about the effectiveness of current measures to protect schools and students. Now, as we process this devastating news, it's clear that addressing the root causes of these pew-pewings and implementing comprehensive comprehensive solutions must be a priority. It's really alarming and heartbreaking to see the numbers of school pupils continue to rise. With the latest incident being the deadliest of the year, the persistent nature of this problem raises a critical question. How are we still facing such frequent and devastating attacks on schools? Students should be able to feel safe and secure in their educational environments. But the reality is that schools increasingly seem to be anything but safe. This situation demands immediate and effective action to address the root causes and implement solutions that genuinely protect children and restore a sense of security to the schools. We have finally come to the end of the video, but what do my viewers have to say? Share your thoughts, your views, your contributions as well, and what you think about this video in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video as I bring you another video.